This is a case study representing the intact post-operative Achilles tendon. We will begin by reviewing the landmarks associated with ultrasound of the Achilles tendon. The first bone we have highlighted here is the tibia with the posterior landmark of the posterior malleolus. Also laterally, in green, we have highlighted the fibula, which is typically not associated in the Achilles tendon examination. Also highlighted here in orange is the talus bone, which is also responsible for the site and evaluating most posterior joint effusion. The last bone highlighted in red is the calcaneus, which will serve as our anchor point for the Achilles tendon. This white rim represents the viewable surface anatomy by ultrasound. Here is a superimposed CT scan at the mid-sagittal line of the posterior ankle to put into perspective our general field of view. The blue rim highlighted at the posterior calcaneus is the actual insertion of the Achilles tendon. Highlighted here in yellow represents Kager's fat pad as an unorganized collection of tissue deep to the Achilles tendon. The red indicates the flexor hallucis longus muscle, which is deep to the Achilles tendon and deep to the distal edge of the soleus muscle, which is not highlighted here. Here is a longitudinal image of the Achilles tendon inserting to the posterior calcaneus, highlighted here in white. Here we have a trace in blue representing the Achilles tendon fibrillar pattern as longitudinal linear striations. Deep to this is Kager's fat pad as an unorganized collection of soft tissue. And then proximal to Kager's fat pad is the linear and striated soleus muscle as it also shares insertion points with the Achilles tendon near the gastrocnemius. The Achilles tendon eventually tapers to a thin fascia layer at the mid-level of the gastrocnemius medial and lateral heads. Here is a cross-section of the calcaneus highlighted here in white, followed by a cross-section of the Achilles tendon superficially. Here we will see images of the normal intact post-operative Achilles tendon. Highlighted here is the posterior calcaneus in the mid-sagittal plane. Highlighted here in blue is the mid-sagittal Achilles tendon. Highlighted in red are the multiple sutures present throughout this postoperative Achilles tendon. The Kager's fat pad is compressed anteriorly, making it appear hyperechoic. Deep to the fat pad is flexor hallucis longus muscle before it becomes tendon. The light blue highlighted area represents where we would find a retrocalcaneal bursa. The Achilles tendon still tapers as it reaches the gastrocnemius, only thicker than in the normal images. Instead of the normally parallel surfaces of the Achilles tendon's anterior and posterior margin, we now have a swollen Achilles tendon. In follow-up examinations, always check for neovessel formations as therapy continues. Scanning in two planes 90 degrees from each other is always important. The transverse plane is more important due to the ability to view the entire tendon in one slice, as you scan up and down the tendon, we will see any volume loss in the transverse plane better than in the sagittal plane. In this calcific tendonitis study, the image on the left shows a large calculus deposit proximal to the insertion of the Achilles tendon. Highlighted in blue is the Achilles tendon noted thicker on the left image than the right. As we have had no surgery, these neovessels can be considered inflammatory process and inflammation. When utilizing Doppler, multiple sites should be sampled to ensure that this is not noise due to high gain. Also use pulse wave Doppler to ensure that this is truly flow.